Hey, 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 happy Tuesday. Tonight, I am going to unbox and take a first look at Imperial. <laughs> this massive box from Level 99 Games. So come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com. So, weird start tonight. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the, my software as far as uh, doing, the, uh, doing the show, doing the stream. Our, the opening video disappeared. So I haven't done anything. Anyway, I'm Jeff McLear. I'm back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com. Tonight is Tuesday, February 18th, 2020. This is episode 443 of The Daily Dope. If this is your first time hopping in to catch the show, as you can see already... This is not rocket surgery. This is pretty casual. And because uh, it's live, things happen. But because it is live, that also means that chat is available on YouTube. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the uh, stranger commenters at bay. But I do pay attention to chat as best I can. Sometimes it's zipping by pretty quick when you have a few people in chat. But uh, I do my best to respond. So if you'd like to say howdy, or maybe you've got a question or a comment, by all means, chime in. I will do my best to respond. If you like the video, give it a quick thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to the channel. If you do, don't forget, ring that little bell. It will not only notify you when the Daily Dope goes live, it'll also tell you when I upload standalone videos, such as my interview with Matt Finch which uh, I uploaded over the weekend. Had an opportunity to talk to Matt about uh, a lot of different OSR role-playing topics, as well as mainly the Swords and Wizardry Kickstarter that's going on right now. Really interesting conversation. We had some fun. Uh, although, once again, crazy things happen. Smokey, my cat, was sleeping on my lap. She hopped off during the interview and she bumped a cable that I had no idea she had bumped. So my video just went weak, gone. So, but it, regardless, you know, the audio and everything's still there and you still see Matt talking. So you don't need to see my mug. But uh, when you aren't watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Oh, a couple of friends while you're at it as well. So I see we got Flaming Huron and the Madman are both in chat already. So Flaming Huron's asking, you mean that wasn't you on the video, Jeff? So uh, for about six and a half minutes, it's me. And then I replaced me with a picture of Smokey. Saying a certain cat knocked loose a, a cable. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but that's okay. No big deal. So tonight, I am going to be unboxing and taking a first look at this monstrosity here. So we'll be diving into this in a few minutes. I got a, a wee bit of tabletop gaming news as well. Uh, I see Beat Cafe has popped into chat as well. Good to see you. Welcome aboard. Before I jump into the news, do want to point out, it's looking more and more likely that episode 450 will be the final episode of the Daily Dope. 
It's not getting enough views. I mean, we're still looking at about 100 views a show. And I don't know. It's uh, not uh, not happening. I don't know. We'll see what's ha what's going to happen. Now, after tomorrow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake things up a little bit. There will not be any news. There will be no news on uh, the Daily Dope from Thursday on through next week. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I know a lot of people like the tabletop gaming news. I personally like sharing the tabletop gaming news as well, but like I said, we're only going to be seeing about a hundred people a show. That's uh, that ain't too much. Even the uh, unboxing for D and D Dungeon Mayhem Monster Madness has only got about I think about two hundred and forty views, and I don't know if it's still the case, but I kind of had the only video. <laughs> first look at it so i don't know so flaming heron says people are just hard to please william mcginnis is in chat too good to see you william so looking forward to tonight's discussion i don't know are we discussing anything we're just going to be looking at imperial which funny enough i'm just looking at this box i think it was saturday and uh i was like oh duh because i'm like imperial Imperial, is that the name of it? And then I look at him like, it's Imperial. Just spelled strangely. All right, so we will get into that in just a bit. Got a little bit of news. Let's jump on in. Because this April is going to see Ares Games and Phalanx Games team up to release a title which looks pretty interesting. And I've got the dope on. Europe Divided. Europe Divided is a game of an expansionist Europe a resurgent Russia, and a new Cold War. In the game, you control uh, one of the two powers, either Europe, controlling both NATO and the European Union, or Russia. You manage conflicts of political and military influence, vying for control over Central and Eastern Europe, as well as the Caucasus. Europe is powerful and rich, but bureaucratic and slow to react. Russia lacks Europe's resources, but it can respond rapidly. Europe Divided takes place over two periods, 1992 to 2008, European expansion, and 2008 to 2019, Russian resurgence. Players score victory points by having dominant influence in contested countries in Central Europe, Eastern Europe, and the Caucasus. They can also score victory points by bringing key historical events to fruition. The player with the most victory points at the end of the two periods wins. Europe Divided is rich with history and includes today's potential flashpoints, but it features a quick-playing card-driven core mechanism. Players use cards associated with countries they control to establish political and military influence, gain money, and build and deploy their military presence. An elegant deck manipulation mechanism weakens players' decks as they increase their influence, creating a tension point between seeking to expand and overreaching. Players also compete over key political events throughout the game. Will the Velvet Revolution result in the split of the Czech Republic and Slovakia? How will the Bosnian War end? The players will decide the fate of history throughout this period of Europe Divided. The game is for two players, ages 14 and up, plays it in around 90 minutes. will carry an MSRP of $35 when it arrives in April. This looks interesting. This looks... This looks pretty cool. I, when I first heard about this, and I did see a prototype at Origins, kind of thought, uh, is this just kind of a Twilight Struggle ripoff? But it's not, I don't believe. It, uh, it looks like it's got a little more going on than just trying to copy the car-driven aspects of Twilight Struggle. So it could be pretty cool, pretty cool. So I did want to share this because this is coming out in April and it's got a really friendly price point at $35. I, I double checked to see if that was correct and I had two sources saying it's $35, so pretty cool. So uh, William McGinnis is talking about maybe I should just do one show a week. Well, I'm still going to do videos. Don't worry about that. And you'll have more than one video per week. It's... um. I don't know. It's just doing the, it's 
like I said, got to get more people watching than a hundred. Because you figure a lot of times when I would do, well, I'll get out of this for a second. Um, a lot of times when I would do the just standalone videos, I'll get more than 500 views on, on a single video. Well, that's one video I'm doing just standalone. That's more views than we get in five episodes of the Daily Dose. So, I don't know. I, you know, like I said, I am not, I am not completely, you know, sold on all this. Uh, so Fleming here mentions it's crazy. You have so many new subs and yet that doesn't tra translate into views. I, I know even over the weekend, suddenly we were just celebrating 2,100 viewers or subs, I said, subscribers, right? With the giveaway that I announced on Friday's show. And we were up over 2,100 by that point. Uh, and then today I look and it's like 2130. So over the weekend, there were like 15 new subscribers, which for me is a big deal. So, so I was like, uh, huh. I was like, how, why did all these people suddenly subscribe? Wasn't all these analytics didn't suddenly, you know, get boosted or anything. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Don't worry, it's not like I'm going any place and you're not going to see me. Anyhow, Moon Right Long, uh, now available from White Wizard Games, is the Epic Card Game app. It is absolutely free for PC, Mac, iOS, and Android. And here's the dope. Epic is a fantasy card game by White Wizard Games, which aims to recreate the trading card game style experience from a single box with no additional purchases required. Epic is a card game designed to start quickly, but also to reward deep strategic plays. In Epic, you take on the role of an elder god in conflict with other elder gods. The cards in your deck are your champions who fight for you, and events which represent your will imposed <laughs> on the mortal realm. In Epic, the turn sequence is easy, but there are many options to choose from. You begin the game with a hand of five cards. Each card costs either one gold or is free. You get one gold each turn. You don't need to draw special resource cards or energy cards just to play your other cards. Instead of figuring out which cards you might be allowed to play, you choose which card you want. Epic is non-collectible. So every release contains the same 120 unique event and champion cards with um, pre-draft, pre-constructed, sealed draft formats all available to play. This app has been in the works. I think it has been floating around a little bit as a beta. I might be wrong as far as that goes, but the Epic Card Game is available as of today from the Apple Store, from Google Play, as well as Steam for PC and Mac. Uh, so Fleming Heron says timing on this news, it releases in the next hour or so. I believe on Steam it releases. I'm 99.9% .9 positive it is out on iOS as well as Android, but yes, I was going to mention it is not up yet. At least when I went live, it wasn't up yet. But I do understand it is supposed to be sometime tonight. So uh, the Polter Ghost, welcome aboard. First uh, first time visiting us here at the Daily Dope. It says, oh man, an epic app actually exists. White Wizard didn't tell any of us early access people working on playtesting it if it even existed. It's been years since they started working on it. Uh huh. It was basically done years ago, and I don't know why or what they were doing with it since then. Huh. You know, like I started to mention, I thought that this had been around, but I guess it had not, according to the Holter Ghost. I like White Wizard games. I prefer Hero Realms. I reviewed Epic. And uh, I thought it was okay. If I remember correctly, I think I gave it 
7 out of 10. We enjoyed it, but it didn't scratch the same itch as Hero Realms. And I know a lot of people out there love Star Realms. I just like Hero Realms better. It's just, I don't know. Just, uh, something, you know. Uh, I don't know. All right, moving right along. My final news piece, and I know this is a role-playing game that we have talked about a little bit here on The Daily Dope. Now available from Sean Tompkin is a new supplement for the Iron Swarm. Ah, damn it. Forgot, there was a video for the Epic Guard game. Jeez. Can you tell I was doing everything last minute today? I'll explain what's been going on. I had a doctor's appointment today, so... Yeah, you can tell I was throwing this all together last minute, right? Anyway, there is a 30-second vid for the Epic game Card Game. So kick back, give it a watch. <laughs> I told you it was a fast video. <laughs> anyway, uh, like I said, it's absolutely free. I have not really delved too deeply into it as far as um, if there's microtransactions or anything along those lines. So I did want to share the news because I know a lot of people out there, myself included, I like to play some, uh, you know, online games. I like to play some card games. I, I have been known to bust out a little magic uh, arena so, yeah, Flaming Heron says, I actually like card-type computer games, but I don't know if I could get into the physical versions. And... I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it all depends. I could never go back to, like, playing Magic the Gathering. Like, physically. Uh, number one, especially like tournaments, I've told this story a few times, I'm not going to repeat it again. But uh, Elliot and I had hung out some magic tournaments that were kind of odd. It's not our bag of tricks. But uh, I don't think I'd get into magic just because I don't want to have that kind of money sink. As far as, say, like, card-driven games or deck builders, like Thunderstone Quest, I really like that. You can get your hands on even, like, you know, Star Realms and Hero Realms. You know, I had to go buy booster after booster after booster. So, I don't know. I don't know. So the Poltergeist says, oh, wow. It looks like they barely updated the game since three years ago. Jeez. I don't know what to tell you. I'm just sharing the news for them. Anyway, let's go back to what I started to talk about because available from Sean Tompkin is a new supplement for the Iron Sworn RPG. And I've got the dope on... Delve, a massive expansion for the Iron Sworn RPG. Expeditions into perilous places, more foes and encounters, an array of new oracles, expanded setting info, mysterious objects of power, campaign threats, and much more. The supplement for the Iron Sworn tabletop role-playing game takes your quest to the deepest, darkest reaches of the Iron Land. Plunge into subterranean caverns, explore untracked forests and foreboding swamps, Journey across ice-bound wastes. Uncover lost secrets within ancient ruins. To fulfill your sworn vows, you will brave the most dangerous places of the world and face the most terrible foes. Will you escape the depths? Play to find out. With an array of new options and tools, Iron Sworn Delve is the perfect companion for your Iron Sworn campaign. In or out of the dungeon. Here's what's included. Support for solo, co-op, and traditional guided play. Gameplay options, tips, and setting details for quest-driven expeditions within perilous sites. Hordes of new foes, extraordinary encounters, or I should say extraordinary encounters, and campaign-level threats. Wealth, artifacts, and supernatural rarities to give your character an edge. 
quest starters, sample locations, and an assortment of new oracles to keep your story moving. Inspirational tools for zero prep gameplay. I don't know about that. I don't know about zero prep gameplay, but, uh, you know. With or without a GM. Do you want to point out the supplement does require the use of the Iron Sworn role playing game core rulebook, which also happens to be free to download? Zoinks! Absolutely free. And if I remember right, I think it's like 340 pages. And it's free. Looks really nice, too. Uh, this Iron Sworn Delve is 235 pages. You can get it in PDF over at DriveThruRPG for $12.50. There are also options as far as getting print editions of this as well. As I always like to point out, when I talk about drive through RPG, the gaming gang, thus the Daily Dope, are affiliated with the One Bookshelf sites, which drive through RPG is one of. So if you are going to go over there, or maybe you're going to go over to DM's Guild or Wargame Vault, please stop by thegaminggang.com first. Click on one of our banner ads, and that way, if you do happen to purchase something, get a little portion of that sale. And I really do appreciate all the folks who do happen to use those banners because that kind of keeps the gaming gang website around. <laughs> because uh, on a monthly basis, that usually pays for our hosting. So, pretty cool. Okay, so the madman says, Jeff, we all have days like this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I say I finished this up last minute, getting ready for the show, I was actually having dinner down here in the duct tape studios, finishing up the news pieces and, you know, the images and stuff like that. And I turned on the forward facing camera at two minutes to seven. And then the sound was out of sync. I was like, ah, oh, for crying out loud. And we got Doug Roberts in chat. Good to see you, Doug. Welcome aboard. And a gray day has popped in. So uh, I think a gray day is one of the people who tends to talk a little bit about Iron Sworn role playing game. Uh, I think I think it was a gray day who turned me on to that. So pretty cool. Anyway, so I was going to say, so uh, so I had a, a follow up with my cardiologist. And then so this is why all this stuff is kind of last minute. I have been playing um, Divinity Original Sin 2. And I had invested about, and if you're not familiar with it, it's a isometric role-playing game down on my, on my laptop. I had invested a good 20 hours into it and found out that we had accidentally killed someone in NPC. Now... Not through any of our action, right? They were just, they were uh, friendly. They, they wasn't even friendly fire. We were fighting some baddies and they actually got killed by the baddies by accident. Uh, and I found out like, I lose out on a huge, massive chunk of experience if this NPC is not alive later in the game. Like, I mean, an amount of experience where it would might be very hard to level up to be able to finish the game. So I was like, uh, uh. so I started having to replay it again. So I was doing that this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. So a great day says, yes, I, they think that iron sworn is great. And Dell just came out. Yes, I know. That's why I was sharing the, uh, the news piece about Dell. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into this massive box, which is Imperial Spells and Steam. So this is kind of, it strikes me as this is going to be kind of like a magic-fueled 18xx game. This is from Level 99 Games, designed by Trey Chambers, with artwork and graphic design provided by Laura Lavito and Eunice Abigail Tio. I apologize if I mispronounced those names. The game is for two to six players, ages 12 and up, plays in around 20 minutes per player. And it does carry an MSRP of $89.99. Do you want to point out there's already an expansion for this? There's an, a, like a deluxe expansion as well, which I think uh, uh, like 
gives a big boost to the component quality as well. So uh, the man man says that box looks to be bigger than Gloomhaven and Anarchy. I don't think it is bigger than Gloomhaven. I do not believe so. But this is big. I mean, uh, it's almost as big as Thunderstone Quest. So pretty good size. So let's roll this over. <laughs> and it says, as a captain of industry, it's your job to bring the industrial age to the magical world of Indinus, which I think is the setting for some other level 99 games. Build railways to connect key resources to your network, then supply them to cities around the world. Each contract you fulfill will build up your company's infrastructure, leading to the development of new powers that will redefine your strategy. Mine mana from the land to enable the construction of more lines, balancing the opportunities of the moment against the depleting environment and the machinations of your competitors. Only the savviest and most creative industrialist will be able to lead the world into the modern era. Okay, so uh, there we go. I was like, where is my hobby knife? It's, uh, and the shrink on this is actually pretty thick. It's not that usual, like the, the usual really thin. That's actually kind of a thicker plastic seal on this. All right. Okay, so we got that. Let's open this on up. And I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to have to play around with the focus a little bit because this is so high. So we've got the operator's manual. So here is the rule book. We'll look at that in just a sec. Uh, looks like we've got some, some promo cards, some bonus cards for another game that I actually got from Level 99. Uh, we will be taking a look at that in the future here. So we get uh, what looks like a ticket folder here. So it's like, yeah, hey, thanks for purchasing the game. Okay. Discover more games. For, yeah, there we go. So Argent, the Consortium, that is one. Pixel Tactics is another one we'll be taking a look at. We've already uh, reviewed Millennium Blades. And uh, Exceed, I actually have the copy of Exceed with Shovel Knight. So we've got quite a bit that we're going to be taking a peek at. So we've got Jackie Florian. Welcome aboard. So, uh, yes, the box is 12 by 12 by 12. It's huge. A good portion of it is empty. The expansion and deluxe version all fit in the big box. All right, good deal. Thank you. So we're going to start taking a look at this stuff. That uh, looks like we got a box inside the box. So let's see what we got here. Or does it, can we just open this up? All right, come on. Where are you? Uh... All right, so first off, that's kind of an oddball. There we go. All right, so we do see that most of the box is taken up by what appears to be various different uh, storage pieces here. We got more stuff down here. Okay, so we got a bunch of different storage, and it's all kind of modular. It's, yeah, it's like one of those nesting dolls. Yeah, you're right, Flaming Huron. It's all this different stuff. Okay, so we have all these different trays there. So it looks like we've got uh, hexagonal tiles. And those are actually placed on here. So what we're going to do is we are going to put some of the storage stuff away. as so we take a look at them. I, I do have to point out, it is pretty cool how each of these actually does have 
had to make sure that we've got this in focus too. Each of these do have an indicator of what's supposed to go in here. So it's not just, oh, hey, here's a, a little storage spot like, like this, right? Like a lot of companies would be like, there you go. So they're like, okay, what goes in there? What, what am I putting in there? Here we've got a little cover to it, clear cover, and it's got these various symbols. So does this one. This one does as well. Yeah, they, uh, they are planning ahead. Looks like we put some decks of cards in here. And then I don't know exactly what this is. So it's so, yeah, looks like I'm reaching into a well. Echo, 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 echo. I do get a kick out of the, how we got the uh, Argent Consortium promo cards in this box. Okay. So let's move this box kind of out of the way a little bit. So, so far, component-wise, looks pretty nice. So what do we got? Uh, okay, that's just paper. So first off, let's, uh, let's move some of this stuff out of the way. And we will take a look at the rule book. Zoom in a little bit, back that back out a little bit. All right. There we go. And what the hell? Might as well pop out there. Hey, everybody. So not a lot of rules. Uh, looks like maybe 20 some pages here. So we get a little bit of a designer forward. We get a discussion of the components. Inside your company folio. Setting up the game. So the reality is, this seems like this is an economic game with a bit of a polish of kind of fantasy. And Flaming Heron says, it looks so deep. Uh, you know what? I was just thinking the same thing. This looks like this might be a fairly complex game, which I, that doesn't bother me. So we have friendlyish competition, advanced rules, talking about gameplay. So we've got specialists. We've got captains and engineers, surveyors, station masters. So we've got administrative options. Spending mana, gaining mana. End of the line. Delivering. So we've got a pickup and delivery system involved in this as well. So we've got demand tiles. Upgrades. Game effects. Wasteland. Huh. Building track. Interesting. And then the game ends. So it looks like here we've got about 12 pages of rules. Then we get some FAQs, a team variance, spell car reference. So I guess we've got different cars that we're going to utilize for the train. Got specialist captains and their company spell cars. Specialist engineers. So the, I guess each of these engineers have a unique ability. It's like these captains have a unique ability as well. There are the surveyors. Here are the station masters. Different awards. Goods descriptions. So I have to admit, it does look like uh, the fiction or the fluff or the backstory uh, does not get uh, the back seats, not taking a back seat here. So folks who uh, who dig this, this kind of, uh, I don't want to say steampunk, because it doesn't really seem like a steampunk game, because it's basically talking about how uh, you're supposed to be you know, bringing this fantasy world into a modern age. So a great day is asking, what is the player count? It is two to six. And supposedly gameplay is about 20 minutes 
per player. So the man man says, unlike Gloomhaven, it looks like once you punch everything out, it actually still fits in the box. Yeah, that's uh that's something that happens with a lot of games, I've noticed. Okay, so let's see what else we've got. So we've got uh it's kind of explaining, okay, so what is this stuff? Right? Oh, and it's actually showing you how you should put this back together. I think is what it's trying to show you. How to put things back together. Once it's kind of funny how the madman mentioned that, and then we've got what appears to say, okay, this is this is how you set this up and put everything back in the box. Pretty nice. So Fleming Heron says, I was talking about the box size, but it does look a little more in depth uh than the number of pages might suggest. It looks a little more in depth compared to quite a few uh this is just some advertising here. Quite a few different 18xx sort of titles out there. So here we've got your folio sheets and just like so. And each one is unique, it appears. And uh, these have a finish to them. So nice. These will hold up to uh, repeated play. So we've got Golden Sands Company. So it looks like that's where your engineers are. I think those are your station masters, surveyors, and captains, is my guess. So we've got Golden Sands, we got King's Line, and uh, actually the backs have their company logo as well. Just like so. Golden Sands looks, that's the font like from a Vegas casino. We've got uh, Afterworld Express. <laughs> when your life is over and it has to absolutely positively get there on time. Caterpillar Conveyance Consortium. Uh, Jesselheim Imperial. I like the fact how these are all different. They all have a little bit of different color variation to them. They all have uh, various different um, logos. There's a little extra on the back here. So the Poltergeist says this is actually a very light game in comparison to its size. Okay, cool. Cool deal. All right. Then we've got a bunch of punch boards. So we are going to start taking a look at those. I have to admit, I really do uh, like that storage solution with all the various different stuff. So uh, I thought these punched out like individual tiles, but they're not. This is all just one board here. So, looks like we've got a variety of different kinds. And it uh, looks like we've got these little tokens here, which I would take a stab in the dark that they, are, they probably represent each of the companies that we're taking a look at. So, the various different... Uh, let's turn it so it's facing the right way. Cool graphics. I like the graphics here. Okay, so we've got the A's, now we've got B. And I would take a stab that we're laying track across. We're going to put some of these together, create a landscape. That's what I would be guessing. Oh, wow. So we don't have cards. We actually have tiles of the captains, the engineers. I think these were the engineers. I think this color was the engineers. Yep. Big wrench or spanner if you're over in the UK. So yeah, I'm going to take a guess. These are the engineers. I think this color here was the station masters. So kind of uh, an anime uh, manga style uh, artwork, art style to it. Got these. These are the uh, different kinds of cars. For your trains. That's kind of cool.
All right, so then these are chief engineers. Or no, these are, uh, I take that back. Looks like they're, they're like um, executive levels for the various different companies here. Jorge Rodriguez has popped in. Good to see you, Jorge. Uh, I take a guess. These like goods, good demand. Not sure. So we've got these little tiles here, almost look like playing cards. Got more of the different train cars. I have to admit, I, I you know, I like the fact that we're looking at this and each one of these looks to be unique. You don't see that with a lot of games, just like we see that all the different engineers and conductors and so on and so forth, station masters, are all unique characters. It's pretty, pretty cool. All right. And then uh, I believe, I think these might be the captains. All right. And then we have a, uh, a railman's whistle, I guess. So I'm going to take a guess. That's probably your first player marker. So that's going to stab with that. So as we can see, all of these are dual-sided oh wow jeez that's pretty cool just like so and this is not the deluxe edition this i believe this is just the regular edition of the game and there are also uh there's an expansion that's already out and there is also a deluxe component upgrade to it. And I, I want to say, I think, I think the upgrade is something like $69.99, something along those lines. I think that's about the price of the expansion as well. Uh, this does carry a, a, um, an MSRP of $89.99. I thought at one point, now I might be wrong, but I could have swore I thought at one point it was... Uh, Carrying an MSRP of $99.99. I might be wrong. I could have swore I thought I ran across it at one point. Uh, I got to admit, just taking a look through, this looks interesting. And the uh, the punch boards, the cardstock is not cheapo, real thin. This will really hold up to play really nicely. Uh, so will these folio boards. I believe that's what they're probably called. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Now let's see what we've got as far as in the box. Because in this white box here is where I think we're going to find all of... Yep, sure enough. Here we go. Oh, wow. These are all plastic pieces. I, okay, so I'm like, I'm thinking, so, uh, so Jackie Florian, Deluxe is $69.99, Expansion is $59.99. Thank you very much for pointing that out. Okay, so we've got uh, some trays here. Oh, and yes, Pinky has decided to come down. God forbid Pinky doesn't come down during an episode to make noise. So we've got these different trays here. We have, I'm not sure if these are supposed to be, I think these are supposed to be maybe cities. Kind of look like, yeah, look like these might be cities. Let's zoom on in, get a little closer in here. All righty, make sure that we've got uh, this in focus here. So now, uh, after I swapped out the, the cameras, I was doing a, I think it was an unboxing. I don't think it was a review. And I zoomed in, and the autofocus on the Panasonic is not very good. And it was like, oh, I'm glad to see that for the, for the last five minutes of the video, everything was uh, out of sync. So we've got uh, a couple of bags of these. This looks identical here. Yeah, those are the same. So, like I said, these look like these are probably cities. So Doug Roberts says, toys, 
We got toys! Uh, Jorge, Jorge was mentioning, oh, nice, uh, nice portraits. Yeah, the artwork's kind of cool. Uh, the artwork is very, very similar to uh, Millennium Blades. So these are, well, you're not going to be able to see it well for the black. These are little engines. So, try to give you a better, better view of this. So these are little engines here. Tell you what, let's, uh, let's see if we can put them on something white, make them stand out a little more. And interestingly enough, it looks like each one of these colors has a different sculpt. We'll find out in a second. Okay, so that's blue. We got the black. Black, it really isn't going to show up that well. Yeah. Each of these sculpts are different. I always like to see game companies go in the extra mile. I mean, these could easily have just been little tokens or just same exact sculpt, just different colors. That's cool. I like that. So we've got that. We've got the red. Get uh, yellow. Here's green. Oh wow, that's oh geez. Okay, I get it. And then we got yellow, which are clear. So these are the clear ones. A little tough to kind of show that off. So one of the companies was the uh, Caterpillar something consortium and it looks like their trains are caterpillars giant caterpillars uh i think i think it faces to the left that is hysterical that's funny that's also very cool huh i don't know about you guys watching i should say guys and gals uh watching out there but uh this does seem pretty interesting, very unique. I will point out uh, when I reviewed Millennium Blades, same thing. I thought uh, I thought that was very unique as well. Very uh, very different game. I really liked it. I played it with Elliot. Uh, I played it with uh, my nephew Cameron. He liked it. Elliot was not so big on it. I was kind of surprised, and he was like, "Well." Because it's a game where it's kind of like supposed to be like a collectible card game game. <laughs> so you're you're playing a collector of cards and playing in tournaments and stuff like that. And he said, well, yeah, if I'm going to do that, I might as well just play Magic. Well, okay. So these are the different uh, colors of and different sculpts for the different trains. This looks more, these look more like a rocket. Yeah, kind of. Very streamlined. I always play red. And I was, uh, a few people had asked, what color piece do I usually try to grab? It's always red. My nephew Cameron's is green. Elliot usually plays blue. So, and then whoever else is with us, they get what's left over. Uh, then we've got these which I believe these represent mana. So just, just kind of, uh, eh, kind of like rocks. And then we've got some, some pawns for each of the player colors. So, and that is what we've got as far as the various different components. Uh, so this is going to be funny. Usually I put all this stuff back in the box, but uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. Or I'll, I'll try to, but I'm not going to put the big white box back in. All right, so. Back to the well. So we've got the big box. We've got all the different storage in here. We have all the punch boards.
we have the various different company folios. We've got the little advertisement. We've got showing us how to set all this stuff up in the storage. We have the rules. And then we've got the little, uh, little hey, thank you letter. For a second, I was like, what was this again? <laughs> so we had the thank you letter. We've got some promo cards for Argent. And then I'm going to put all this stuff in here. And of course, when I do the review, I will have actually sorted through and made sure that I've put everything back in storage the way it's supposed to go. In fact, I'll, I'll probably do my best to maybe include a little bit of video to show where everything goes uh, and then include that in the review, which will be upcoming hopefully within the next couple of weeks. And that is what we find when we take everything from Imperial outside the box. Once again, as I mentioned, this is available right now from Level 99 Games. It is for two to six players, ages 12 and up, plays in around 20 minutes per player, and does carry an MSRP of $89 and 99 cents. Any car, any color. 99.99. Wow, the exposure is really high on uh, the Nikon tonight too, which I, people have been telling me they they like it brighter. So it's like okay, all right. So that is it for tonight's show. As I mentioned, I will have a review of Imperium in the very near future. Should get it to the uh, game table this weekend. We are playing some games this weekend, so. Uh, should be able to get the three plays through. Anyway, uh, what's coming up the rest of the week? So on tomorrow's show, I am going to share my review of Ancient Civilizations of the Ancient Sea, which is from my friends over at GMT Games. That is on tomorrow's show. It's a war game Wednesday. Then Thursday, you know, I love to talk about role-playing games all the time, but I like to focus on them on Thursday. So on Thursday show, we're going to be uh, having a little fun with some Arc Dream publishing releases. I'm going to review a couple of adventures for Delta Green. Ooh, scary kids, scary. And I'm going to actually crack open and we're going to take a peek at the need to know, which is the Game Master screen. I believe there are quick start rules in here also. Uh, so, of course, I already reviewed the box set. Then, on Friday's show, I will share how to play and review Thieves' Den from Daily Magic Games. So, there you have it. Uh, so, uh, Jackie says, thanks for the stream. Sorry, I was backseating. Looking forward to the review. Well, I have to admit, I pretty much figured that uh, Jackie had some affiliation with Level 99 games when they popped in. So, no, that's quite all right. I don't mind people backseating at all. It's kind of funny when we have uh, somebody from a publisher pop in when I'm doing a review, and my review is like, yeah, it's okay. And they're like, do. So, Great A says, tomorrow night is Zone Alpha Night. Nice. Uh, that is the, um, is that the Osprey Games Minish Skirmish rules? Like, isn't it like, no, I almost said like Cyberpunk Skirmish, but it's not. Is I think it's like post-apocalyptic Europe sort of thing. So, anyway, yes, and Jackie says, oh, I saw your tweet. Well, welcome aboard. Glad to have had you on board. Don't be a stranger. So that's it for tonight's show. As I always like to point out, if you like the video, please give it a quick thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to the channel. If you do, don't forget, ring that little bell, because it'll notify you not only when the Daily Dope goes live, but it'll also point out when I upload standalone videos, such as this past weekend's interview with Matt Finch. 
And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV, celebrating our 10th year. Be sure to get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Everybody who took some time out to hang out and chat, thank you very much. Taking a peek, make sure that there isn't anything. Uh, there we go, co-op stalker style. Thanks, a great A. Kind of thought it was sort of, yeah, sort of like Eastern European block post-apocalyptic skirmish rules. Anyway, uh, those of you who hung out in chat, thank you very much. Always appreciate that because then I don't feel like a dope just speaking into the ether, staring into a camera. But of course, if you don't watch live and you have, happen to watch after the fact, even if you're watching on Memorex, thank you very much for that as well. So everybody enjoy your Tuesday night. I will be back tomorrow. And of course, until then, happy trails. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel by clicking right here. And of course, if you want to catch up on past episodes of The Daily Dope, check out this playlist. And if you'd like to see what YouTube's recommending you take a peek at from the channel, just give a click right over here. Of course, I'm Jeff McAleer. And once again, thank you very much for watching.